We've got new games coming to Game Pass, some new stuff coming to the PlayStation Plus members, and also Microsoft somehow acquired Ninja, a human being. It's kind of weird. Let's jump into it. What is up, guys? Welcome to episode 92 of Diggity, a video game podcast. I'm Jeff James. As always with me is the incredible, unobtainable, luscious Brody Faults. How are you, my friend? It's my Friday, even though it's actually Thursday, and the day this episode comes out is actually Friday, so this is kind of a time fuck, but I'm great. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> uh, I'm good, dude. I am in uh, a lake house in Muskegon, Michigan, um, which I have no idea where that is geographically, so I'm kind of lost, but uh, <laughs> it's a little colder it's... here, and there's water. So You're close to your homeland, so that's something. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, it sir. is something. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Michigan, you know, that's a thing. You're in Michigan, <laughs> one step uh, closer to Canada. <laughs> Canada. Uh, follow us on uh, Instagram and Twitter, guys, at Diggity Podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, YouTube username is Diggity, or look for Diggity Gaming. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the plus button, or the follow button on whatever platform you're listening to, to the audio version of the podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. Every time you do that, when a new episode goes up, you'll get notified when some new fresh hotness hits your ears. <laughs> mm, hotness yeah hell yeah um let's just jump into it. it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter episode today just because of news and also our topic but um you want to hit us with the uh, game pass news dude yeah so uh there's been a little bit of game pass movement or some movement that is coming up i guess uh so games that are coming to game pass on august 1st ashes cricket is coming to console uh, so Xbox, uh, Pandemic is coming to console, and Downwell is coming to PC. On August 8th, uh, Jackbox Party Pack 2 is coming to console, and Space Hulk Tactics is coming to PC. On August 14th, uh, Slay the Spire is coming to both console and PC. And then games that will be leaving Game Pass here soon. Uh, so as far as Xbox One games go, Graveyard Keeper will be leaving uh, which is the only Xbox One game, and for Xbox 360, Castle Storm, Joe Danger, Do- Joe Danger 2, uh, Monday Night Combat, Toy Soldiers, Toy Soldiers Cold War, and Spelunky. Um, we don't know when these games will be leaving, but they will be leaving sometime in the near future. Uh, I would imagine sometime before September. Um, but yeah, man, there's uh, some decent games in the the games that are coming. Uh, Jackbox Party Pack Two is always fantastic. Um, I I own both of, or sorry, not both. Uh, like four of these games <laughs> on my Xbox, <laughs> and one of them on my Switch. And I wish I owned all of them on my Switch um, because now my Xbox is no longer in the living room. But it's in my man cave, and nobody likes to huddle around in here to play a game. Um, so, yeah, the, the Switch is the perfect place for me to have this personally, just due to the, the location of my console. Uh, and I, I want to play this Slay the Spire. I've heard a lot about it. I don't know anything about it too much, at least, other than the the kind of uh, the concept of it. But uh, I, I really want to give that one a go. And also uh, Space Hulk Tactics. Uh, that. That's one I've heard a lot of raving reviews about and something I would like to give a go for sure. Sweet. Um, I've, I'm have i kind of more pumped about uh, the Jack Box Party Pack like you mentioned. Yeah. And then uh, Space Hulk is good. Um, played that a little while back. Um, and uh, a little sad that Spelunky's gone. That's a great game if no one's played it. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure most people have dabbled into Spelunky at one time or another. Just it's, it's up there with like, I actually have boring, not, you know, in terms believe of it or not. What? Oh, yeah. dude. Um, I definitely yeah. recommend actually hitting it up before Maybe it goes I'll, away. Seriously. Yeah, I'll hit it up for sure. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, on the PlayStation side of things, you got some PlayStation Plus free games for August that were announced. And this starts on August 5th. You'll be able to get Wipeout Omega Collection and Sniper Elite 4. And mistake me, or mistake me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I made a mistake. <laughs> mistake me. <laughs> mistake me if I'm wrong here. Let gone bys be gone bys. <laughs> um, the, uh, did we not get Sniper Elite like three or two like a little while back? Or am I wrong uh, on that? I believe we got it on the Xbox. Okay. I thought it was on PlayStation as well. I'm I like, think oh. it was even Sniper Elite 4 as well. Was it? Okay, if I, so if just, I remember correctly. So yes. they're just changing stuff. Well, anyways, August right. 5th, uh, you can get access to those two games. Sniper Elite's always a good series to play. Um, 
good thing oh, to yeah. dive into for a little bit and, and, and trickle around. Wipeout's also good. I'm just not a big, like, F-Zero kind of futuristic fan of that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it is definitely an F-Zero racing game type deal. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, if you're not into it, you're going to fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you like racing games, it's it's at least worth checking out, mm-hmm. if nothing else. Sure. But. Cool. Uh, so Microsoft now owns Ninja. Um, <laughs> for for lack of a better way to put it, uh, Ninja and Microsoft have both announced that they are working together, and that Ninja now is um, basically affiliated with Mixer. Um, which, if you don't know anything about Ninja, Ninja is a huge Fortnite streamer, uh, the first esports player to ever be featured on a in or a ESPN uh, magazine, mm-hmm. uh, and also he was a big Twitch streamer. So the fact that he is now moving to Mixer is uh, really something. That is that is definitely uh, something I did not foresee oh, coming dude, because be he's so much money. Oh, he is worth a ridiculous amount of money. And the fact that no, no, now this my deal, this deal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, in general, he's worth a lot of money now anyway. But on top of that, oh, yeah. the amount of money that he just earned by signing with Microsoft to now stream through Mixer versus Twitch is astronomical. He is probably the best known Fortnite player, which Fortnite is just this astronomical game right now anyway so to be the most well-known person and then to sign with mixer which is obviously microsoft's uh streaming service this is a huge deal for microsoft and this is i imagine probably the the first of many deals like this that will be coming i imagine there will be quite a few other streamers that will be also making the plunge to go to mixer uh versus twitch we don't we don't know the monetary amount that he got, right? No, 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 no. the oh, The only man. thing I could find on this so far is just the actual uh, announcement tweet. Oh, okay. It was gotcha. just the announcement tweet. That's so that's all I could do find. Anything on Twitch anymore? I would assume not. I mean, if he's got a cow, I, that that dude. would be like working with Nike and then being like, yeah, but I still wear Under Armour, you know. <laughs> Like you, you, you wouldn't be able to do both at that point. I, I, I feel like wild, this is definitely, dude. well, yeah. And it, it's crazy because like if you own a Microsoft product, if, if you play Xbox mixer is super easy to use and super easy to get into. Oh, I yes. mean, you don't need anything, but at the same time, it is by far the less popular platform mm-hmm. uh, for streaming. So uh, and, and if you hear anybody talking about streaming, uh, they're, they're always streaming to Twitch. So uh, for the, Twitch, Microsoft yeah. to be making yeah. these moves to promote the absolute hell out of Mixer and try to win over the people that currently use Twitch to watch people play games or or even the people that are streaming, I mean, this is crazy. This is a huge deal for Microsoft. Dude, Microsoft's killing it, man. They are they're finally killing using it. their Microsoft money and seeing the game side and the gaming potential because the gaming at this point i mean <clears throat> it, mistake me if i'm wrong it's uh <laughs> it's um i mean put it on a shirt touching <laughs> it's almost touching you know every facet of microsoft at this point i mean it yeah. is a windows os device it's a windows 10 device technically speaking um it's it uses microsoft azure, azure yeah for x cloud uh, it's touching, you know, Azure for Game Pass with the um, and the subscription service for that, which they're trying to knock out, like um, GameFly and other stuff like that, and 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 other gaming right. subscription platforms. Um, it's you know, like it's it's crazy, man. Now they're gonna get into the streaming side of things. It's wild. I mean, they're they're really killing it. I am so pumped Wild. to see what they bring in into this next generation because so far all of the things that they have been doing have been just crazy big. You know, the the, the acquiring uh, a ninja as a, an affiliate to Mixer is just huge. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, with uh, all of the other things that they're doing with Azure and with xCloud and all of that. I mean, they they are perfectly setting up this next generation to be a to massive fucking it. hit. Oh, just so absolutely They're going to destroy. And then the thing is, too, is I think this, this this plan that they're doing, 
will finally contain people into an ecosystem, right? An ecosystem usually before was just, you know, first party titles, which they're also making a ton of, right, as we speak for the next for the next console. But the big thing is like it's gonna be interesting to see what, what they can do to keep people inside of that environment. I think all these moves that they're making right now allow someone to get in and then I mean really not be able to get out. Oh yeah. You've got subscription yeah, this services, is just... you've got the streaming service, you've got all these integral plays that integrate with it and with each other and it's just gonna I mean it's gonna cause, you know, like the ultimate ecosystem. <laughs> it's gonna well, be crazy, it... dude. Yeah, and even on top of that, like if you were already part of the Xbox ecosystem and you have been, you know, since early on in the Xbox One's uh, lifetime, you have a ton of games that you have gotten for free. Now, PlayStation does the same thing, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like whichever platform you have used in like the last generation, it's going to be hard to switch away from it because it is something where you have a lot of games already on that console. Mm -hmm. And whether you're going to play them again or not, that's not really the point because in your mind, you're like, well, I own these. I don't want to switch platforms. But And, you know, PlayStation has been leading this this whole – uh, generation currently, but I I honestly think with the moves that Xbox is making and Microsoft as a whole, I I think they're just completely setting themselves up to destroy this next generation. It's so good. I'm so excited to see what they do. Oh, that's gonna be great. Stoked. Awesome. Um, last piece of news before we get into our topic today, which is uh, just quickly, you know, our three top, um, our top three. Uh, favorite video game characters of all time. Uh, Universal Orlando uh, announced a new theme park today called Universal's Epic Universe, which is kind of an interesting name, honestly. But um, in that park, they've announced that there's actually going to be a Nintendo Land uh, in that park. Um, well, they've hinted at it, winked at it, and it's been confirmed by fans um, to where the Nintendo Park's going. It's going to be a cornerstone of the actual park itself, and it's going to be a near replica of the Japan Park. Uh, it's crazy, dude. Some of the rides they're talking here. They're talking a Mario Kart ride. They're talking a donkey, like a Donkey Kong, like jungle ride where you're in like a mine cart. And the way that the ride system so, works is it looks like you're on like a track, like a train track. But then mm-hmm. the actual thing's on like a boom arm and there's a track underneath of it. So like you jump parts of the track and it looks like you're jumping it, but you're not. So does it seem to be like it's going to be pretty similar to the... Uh to the scale model that I posted on our Instagram a while back for the yeah, Japan. Yeah, pre- pretty uh, near to that. Mario I think theme park. Some, some people are just, yeah. yeah, I think some people are saying that there might be a, a little bit of difference just in, in the way that in Japan, a lot of the theme parks have to make a lot bigger of, of, of walkways in Japan, right? Just for the sheer amount of people. And that's kind of what people are used to. A shitload um, of people but other in a than small that, area of space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there should be, there should be a, a Mario Kart ride where apparently you can like, it, People are saying that there's rumors going around that it could be like a VR style thing where like you have a shell and you throw it at a car in front of you and then that car will actually like wipe yes. out. Yes. I like, was just going to ask you, you can, if like, I could throw turtle stuff. shells. Yeah. And you can like drift and stuff. And then um, yeah. apparently there's a Yoshi ride as well. That's going to be like a, a dark ride where you're just kind of like sitting on a Yoshi and you're, I don't know. Poop eggs. Shit. And throw them at people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> awesome. Dude, I, I really hope they do get it in Orlando, and I hope they get it within the next couple of years because oh, I'm yeah. planning on going there in the next couple of years. Yeah, they're announcing so the timeline. Let's go ahead and get that they're here annu- soon. They're announcing the timeline in a couple of weeks, I think they said, through their Twitter. And I was, I was prisoned through the t- Twitter and – a lot of people are asking questions, and they're actually answering a lot of them, but, like, giving dates Good. and, like, saying, like, yeah, we'll announce, like, a set date for this. A lot of people are saying this is going to be open in two years. No shit. Yeah, like, the that's whole cool. thing. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm pumped. That's that's a huge cool. undertaking for two years, but that's awesome. I hope they get it. That's Like I Yo, said, I'm dude, going in about two years, so that's – Yeah, I'm going in two years, so I'd really like to be able to take my kids there. But at the same time, that would be right about the time it's opening, and it would be insane there. Yeah, dude, I'm stoked. So stoked yeah, for this. Man. Cool. I know you like your roller coasters. Oh, <laughs> please. <laughs> I listen to roller coaster podcasts. Right. <laughs> Shout out to In The Loop. Yeah. Been a listener for 10 years. Damn. Mm-hmm. Damn. All right, dude. Let's uh, let's get into our topic here. So sure. Th- th- 
the the topic that we chose for today just because there's there's not a whole lot of news going on but uh, uh basically w- we wanted mm-hmm. to choose a topic that would be fun and this one was uh this one was kind of exhausting thinking about honestly we chose our top three favorite characters from video games of all time um Instead of doing five, we chose to do three this time just because it is so hard to determine which character is your favorite and which character, you know, where they fall into this line. So, um, I guess without further ado, let's go, Jeff. Okay, Give it to me. What's number three? Yeah. Number three, Kirby. Um, Kirby. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, reason for this, um, primarily the tie into the TV show. Honestly, um, I watched oh, a hell of a lot of Kirby as a kid. Um, <laughs> hell yeah. Kirby right back at you. And uh, on, oh man, what was it? Fox Kids or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So I watched that for a while. And uh, and I love the games, uh, generally speaking. Um, yeah. I think the character's adorable, hilarious, but its powers are also incredible. I mean, like, you'd watch Kirby right back at you and, like, you'd be like, oh, Kirby's going to get absolutely destroyed here. And then he'd just come out of nowhere and just roid it up, eat something, roid it up. <laughs> Go mess that guy up. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I also have played so many hours of him as a character in uh, Super Smash Brothers all through the years, all different installments of the game. So, um, for that, it is my number three. Nice. Uh, so, m- my number three is Lucina from the Fire Emblem series, specifically Awakening. Um, this is a character that... I kind of have a hard time explaining why she kind of stuck with me as one of my favorite characters from the series as a whole and just in general. Uh, but it, it's kind of the simple, like, uh, she she's a, a blue-haired sword wielder, but just the way she's presented in Awakening, and on top of that, uh, she... Uh, it, spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't played Awakening by this point in time. Uh, she is Krom's daughter. Um, but uh, there's just something <clears throat> about the character that's very enduring. And and just, she seems like a very wholesome person. And her whole goal, um, again, spoiler alert, if you haven't played Awakening, uh, she goes back basically to save her father. And that, that's the whole purpose behind it. And, uh, and just she's she's one of the characters that in a game that sometimes can get uh focused too much on you know the the fan service stuff and you know giving the characters gigantic boobs or or just scantily <laughs> clad or uh. whatever it be you know it, it, and again this is coming from someone that loves this series uh so i i i know where its weaknesses are at and that's one of them sometimes Granted, it's not with the newest one, but still, it can be a problem. Um, I, I feel like she was kind of a breath of fresh air, and she was the the character that was, I mean, completely covered up and completely modest, and just this this very, uh, well, without being risque, she was still like a a well done character and a very uh, unique character. And I, I think they just knocked it out of the park with her. And, and that's why she remains my, my favorite, uh, fire emblem character. And one of my favorite characters of all time, obviously number three. So what's number nice. two, Jeff? What number two is an odd one. Koopa or Koopa brothers, I guess like red really? Koopa and green Koopa. Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. So, um, generally speaking in any Mario, um, esque game, Mario party, Mario Kart, all that kind of stuff. I am typically using Koopas, uh, whether it's the red shell Koopa or the green shell Koopa. Um, for example, I'm a dry bones kind of guy. Oh, there you go. Not gonna lie. So, for Hell example, yeah. um, Mario Kart Double Dash for me, all time favorite game. For those who don't know and haven't listened, that I've preached about this like 20 times, um, <laughs> and it's gonna come back. They're gonna bring it back. God. Reggie's gone. That's okay though, because Bowser's gonna bring back Mario nah. Kart Double Dash. Bowser, come on, man. Um, we need it. Yeah, come on, buddy. Come on. Um, but anyways, uh, I played a hell of a lot of, of time with them. I think they're adorable characters. Um, yeah. I, I think that they're actually underutilized in a lot of the games because like a Mario <laughs> Tennis, for example, um, or a Mario Kart, they have unreal abilities. I mean, you just constantly get green shells or red shells <laughs> in Double yeah. Dash. Um, yeah. They're pretty fast character, typical to like a, a toad, but a little under 
on the so they've got good acceleration but also good top speed um and i've got a little bit of nostalgia with it because me and my brother used to play uh double dash together and uh mario tennis together and i would be the red shell koopa and he'd be or like para koopa and he'd be um uh, just normal regular Koopa, so a little nice. nostalgia there. But yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, number two, that's my old time. I mean, there's no like crazy elaborate backstory to them right, at all right. by any means. But good nostalgia, and I think they're just adorable characters and and, and fun to play with. Uh, nice man. I I I do like the Koopas. They are fantastic characters, especially when they're sorry not for just the awkward kinda... pause there for a second. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, <laughs> I was I was looking at my Apple Watch. <laughs> and my 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 stand thing like my my watch vibrated for like my activity thing and it's like you've just met your stand goal for the day meanwhile <laughs> i'm laying nearly flat on the floor right now <laughs> nice so <laughs> there's something uh, wrong no i i like the koopas i always have uh like I said, I I play dry bones, so I'm I'm almost in the in the same group there, just kind of like slightly out of there. But uh, the the Koopas are fantastic characters for sure, especially when they're not just a random enemy in a level just for the sake of having an enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, so my number two uh, is actually Arthur Morgan. Okay. So uh, while I still have not finished Red Dead, <laughs> which I need to go back and finish. Arthur Morgan was uh, something that you don't see a whole lot in video games. A a character that has drastically changed from the beginning of the story to the end of the story. And even then, even in the beginning of the story, you could see hints of good in him. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's one of those characters that I just found interesting. And he was one of those characters that was easy for me to like because he was the guy that was stuck in a shitty predicament and a shitty situation overall, and he wanted to make it good, and he wanted to make things better, and, you know, I think at, at, at the point he was in, uh, he was pretty well stuck where he was at, but, you know, he definitely wanted to be a better person, and depending on how much side stuff you do, you see you see a lot of different things from uh, Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption 2. I forgot to say which game he's from, just in case you don't know. Uh, <laughs> But I, I, he's just one of those characters that I, I really found kind of fascinating from like a, a psychological point of view to see all the things he's been through and, you know, how you would think he would be heartless considering he's, you know, a killer and a, a, a robber and all of these different things. But he's very um, humane in a way that you would not expect, I would suppose. Uh, and I just, I think Rockstar did a hell of a job with him and I am absolutely spacing the voice actor's name, but I think the voice actor absolutely knocked it out of the park Agreed. playing Arthur. And I, I honestly don't think they could have cast him any better. No. I, I think he was just perfect for that role and he brought so much life to a character that could have easily been very dull and very boring and would have completely changed how that game played and how that game felt. And I, I think overall, he's just an incredible video game character. So yeah, that's my number two. Uh, so my number one is, uh, Arthur Morgan. (laughs) (laughs) So, well, uh, everything that you just said, uh, uh, (laughs) hits the nail on the head. Um, he is on, is probably one of the, um, I mean, I, I connected with this character not on a personal level, but just like it was. It was <laughs> I've probably killed one of people. The only characters. I've robbed people. <laughs> yeah, I've killed people. I've been a cowboy. <laughs> um, no, I mean during the whole time I was playing the game, I just kept on saying "Wow," because I legitimately felt the motion during during a story, like parts of the story. Um, for those who haven't uh, beat the game, uh, the end scene is just incredible and just causes you to hate anyone who tries to go against him. Um, and you hit the nail on the head. I mean, you, you basically know from, I'd say, probably a couple hours into the game, not um, completely the direction that it's going to, but you know that he's making bad decisions. And the entire time you're kind of like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Mm, don't trust this guy. You know, I don't trust this guy. And, like, you know, they have the stuff, obviously, like the jump stuff where it's like somebody dies and you weren't expecting that. But, you know, the big thing mainly right. is, is that it, it's just it's it's incredible when, like, you know, someone's 
he, he's making an action in the game and you're like no and i caught myself literally saying no which why it is one of my top games of all time and that's why he's my number one character ever because i've never connected with the character that much the yeah. story was incredible yeah I- it was so good, and it, that's hysterical that I picked him as my number two, and you picked him as your number one. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't sure which direction you were going because you chose, you know, Koopas and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so I was looking. Sure if it you was going... looking a lot more Nintendo, and then it took a dark twist. Yeah, I was thinking like number one was gonna be like fucking Mario or right. Zelda or something like yeah. that. Yeah, nope, know? but nope. Fantastic, dude. It, I, I I cannot uh, say enough about that character. I, I genuinely think he is one of the best characters I've ever seen in video games, and that's obviously Easily. why he's at my number two and you're, you're number one. So uh, mm-hmm. my number one is another character that I, I actually connected with on a personal level, uh, Kratos from the newest God of War. Not, not specifically the older God of Wars, but... Uh, very specifically this new God of War. So uh, if you, if you have not played this, this is a game where um, I, I'm, I'm going to try to stay away from spoilers as much as I can, but just a broad, broad stroke of what this game's about. Uh, but Kratos is, you know, going on an adventure for lack of a, a better word with his son. <laughs> <laughs> and it, Throughout this, uh, Kratos is very um, recluse from his son in a way. Uh, he was very stern and very um, just direct, and in a way that was kind of uh, turn offish for the son. Yeah, and so for for this character to grow throughout this story, and as they go on this this quest to to complete the task that they set out to complete. Cause I'm still trying to stay away from spoilers. Uh, because if you have not played this game, absolutely go out and play it. If you have a PlayStation, but, um, uh, he changes so much and, and you can see, you know, by at the beginning of it, you thought he was just being cold towards, towards his son and just very, um, just shut away from, from everyone around him. And as the story continues, you see him grow closer to his son and become a little more open and become uh, just gentler with his son overall, which, mind you, Kratos is the god of war. So, (laughs) I mean, I could see why there's an issue here, but the way they did the storytelling here is is just gorgeous and... And from a father's perspective, it it hits a point that I I feel like some people who may not be fathers yet might have missed. Um, But it it really, really tugs on the heartstrings and how you can see things that you do in your daily life and how you interact with your children and and just the the different situations and different things. And it kind of opens your eyes in a way that you wouldn't expect a video game to make you think and and just you know be more careful about you know hey don't make sure you sound sincere when you talk to your kid even if it's not intentional to just be kind of like give them a half-ass answer like just all of these different things that i i've never experienced in a video game It, it was one of those things that as i was playing through this game I, I don't think I've ever connected with a character so so strongly because it, it, it is very easy to just keep going you know through through life and and still and yeah you love your kids but it, it's very easy to not realize how you may be acting in a certain moment affects your children and things like that mm-hmm. and I think I think the way they portrayed Kratos and Atreus in this game was just absolutely gorgeous and i think they 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 really made something special with that game for sure so that that's my number one damn that was beautiful (laughs) thanks man (laughs) Uh, you know what's also beautiful this podcast guys as we close do you want uh, to do 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 you have any honorable mentions yeah i've I've got a few yeah Uh, yeah i didn't know um, if you had any or not I'll just name them off real quick. Um, okay. Link. So Link, obviously. Yeah. Huge part of my childhood. Love him to death. 
um, Banjo Kazooie. I guess it's technically two, but Banjo Kazooie. Um, and Close uh, Ratchet and Clank as well. Yeah. Another two for. Mm hmm. Nice, man. Uh, my number one honorable mention was Link, uh, as always. Huge part of my childhood as well, but he doesn't talk enough, so I couldn't really put him into my top three. <laughs> There's no like emotional connection to the guy. He's just somebody I've spent a lot of time adventuring oh, with. I love it. That's um, hilarious. My number two honorable mention was Claptrap. Um, he annoys the shit out of me sometimes, but at the same time, <laughs> It was also a character that uh, back when, you know, the first Borderlands came out, I absolutely loved because I thought he was funny. And now Mm -hmm. as an adult, it's a little different. But at the same time, I still have that nostalgia for him. Uh, My number three was Well, you'll know if you love him with the new game. Yeah, we'll see. (laughs) Uh, My number three was actually Spider-Man in the Spider-Man or Marvel Spider-Man for PS4. Um, uh, That one, I felt I, I didn't put him higher just because... I felt like it was cheating because it's Spider-Man and I'm a huge Marvel fan and all that stuff. But Mm -hmm. I, I, I think he at least deserves an honorable mention. No, he deserves it now because of this game. Oh, for sure. That this game was incredible. And the voice acting was absolutely amazing. I could not have asked for a better Spider-Man as far as voice goes. And just the game and the story in itself was incredible. Uh, and he absolutely deserved to be on my list, but I, I, like I said, I kind of felt like I was cheating a little bit, so I, I tried to mix it up a little bit. Uh, and my my last honorable mention, I, I had four, um, is actually Petra um, from the newest Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, this is a character that so far I haven't got a huge amount of time to spend with her, but she reminds me of Starfire from Teen Titans. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever watched that. Um, yeah. The yeah, OG she, Teen Titans. Not the new uh, one. A little bit of both, but probably more so the first because she is fairly mm-hmm. serious, but she she has the like uh, the weird sentences and stuff like that. It just doesn't translate quite properly for her. Uh, but she's very just so far a very lovable character and so innocent in a way, but also ferocious as far as you know going into battle and things and so far she's probably my favorite character in the game so yeah that that was just my my last honorable mention i think these lists were very uh very awesome i i really liked i i was curious what yours were gonna be uh as i was making my list i was very curious as to what you were gonna come up with but uh the koopas were a little bit of a surprise Mm -hmm. but i i i could have I could have probably predicted the rest. I would have guessed maybe, but Mm -hmm. dude, this, this is a cool topic. I I really like diving into the things that, you know, make video games mean so much to us and, and why we do what we do. And, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. No, absolutely. Well, guys, if you want to support the podcast, you can head over to patreon.com slash diggity podcast. We'd be very happy if you want to become a Patreon over there. Um, and today's podcast, uh, sorry, another way to support it is by heading over to audibletrial.com slash diggity, uh, where you can get access to a ton of audiobooks and you get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial on us by heading over to audibletrial.com slash diggity. Um, like I said, it's a great audiobook platform. I use it. Uh, it's fantastic. So head on over there. Um, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Diggity Podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Search for Diggity Gaming, and you'll find the little green logo with the black joystick. Um, we just put up our Supermarket Shriek uh, Let's Play up there, and that's uh, <laughs> pretty funny to <laughs> to watch us fail hard <laughs> at the start. I'm excited to see the different episode episodes that come out um, for this Let's Play um, as we get you know a lot better <laughs> as we go along. Um, <laughs> you can follow me on uh, Xbox One. My gamer tag is Maple Jeff. Uh, I am also on Xbox One at Luscious Brody and on PlayStation Wolverine's cousin, caps on Wolverine, caps on cousin, no <laughs> space in between. <laughs> Formatting. Uh, guys, leave us a review. It helps us out a ton. Uh, one, it's kind of how you get noticed on platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and such. And two, uh, when you leave a comment on your review, it gives us feedback to make the show better each and every single week. And we appreciate everyone who's given us a review thus far. And until next time, guys, we will see you for the Wednesday show. See ya. I love video games.